Today I'm going to show you how to drop the valve body in a 47 RH. This is a 1995 Cummins two-wheel drive. I opted not to put it in the lift just because we don't quite have the height clearance to make it worthwhile. And also it's a pain in the neck to open the doors and stuff once it's in between the posts. So what I just do is just jack on the bottom and then place a jack stand on each side for stability. Right now I'm going to disconnect the shift linkage from the transmission. First I start with the TV cable, which is just a kind of a bolt heading through, pinching it into place on top of the gear selector. And remove the spring, remove the pinch, the pinch bolt on each, and then both gear selector and TV lever should pop right off and don't forget to unplug the, the harness heading over to your solenoids in the valve body and this is a necessary evil before you take the valve body itself out okay now that the TV cable is unbolted the shift linkage cable is unbolted the pinch bolt on it is gone and the solenoid is unplugged go up to the top of the vehicle without having the shift linkage off and shift it into low and then you'll see that later that will help us get an e-clip off within the valve body Now I'm going to drop the pan, and right now I've got two roasting pans underneath it to catch the fluid because my drain is all full. Um, the best way to do this is either large roasting pans if you don't have a drain, but if you get a drain, get a drain with a wide funnel so that you can catch all the fluid as it drips down. Because once it starts going, it's just going to pour all over the place. And these are half inches, and it's easy if you have a electric impact or something of that sort because you can get them all out fast and you're not going to get drenched. As you can see the roasting pan works quite well. Um, I'm going to let this go for a while. I usually do one side at a time, slowly back them out until it starts draining and let it drain gently into the pan. Uh, the electric impact I'm using I always like to wrap my tool when it's going to get in some dirty places because I'd hate to have all that fluid all over it because it would make a mess of it and go down into the vents, the vents of the impact and everything. So I've got it wrapped in a uh, shop towel bag just tied onto it. I'm just going to let it drain out before I start working on the rest of them. Okay, now that the pan is removed, the next step is to remove the clip from, let's see if I can see it on the camera, right there, and that is on the park paw. Let's try to point at it here. Right up in here. And that's why we put the transmission in low, so that we can get at the park paw. That'll take just a pry. I'm using just a small screwdriver with a magnetic end. The magnetic end helps if you lose it somewhere, you can grab a hold of it and pick it up without dropping it someplace into your pan or elsewhere in the transmission. Um, I'm trying to think of anything else while we get to the next steps which would be loosening up the bolts on the valve body itself and slowly working the solenoid out from the top. Um, you, you might have to give a little force to get the solenoid out um, but I just gently tapped from the top down trying not to break it because it's a bit brittle and also you want to watch for the reverse light and neutral safety switch right there. Mine is broken. That's half the reason why I'm taking mine out today is because part of the plastic's missing right here. So I have to change my gear selector to fix that. Out. Okay, I'm down to the last 7 sixteenths bolt right here and it's underneath the accumulator housing and as you back these off this is going to also dump more transmission fluid so have your pan ready but at this point 
slowly back that one out and be ready because there's a spring up in here that's going to fly out like a jack-in-the-box and somewhere across the garage to some place you will never see it again. The other reason why this transmission valve body is coming down. Now with the whole valve body unbolted, the only thing left holding the valve body in is this right here. This connector protruding through the top of the transmission, the solenoid the switch right south itself is bolted in to the top of the valve body and it needs to be worked through. There's two O-rings holding it into the transmission that need to be kind of worked free without breaking the tab on the connector itself. So I'm actually going to tap down lightly from the top to get it to push through without breaking it. Here's the tranny pan of the transmission. Once you get the tranny pan out, before you reinstall this, make sure that you clean out any grime that is on the magnet in the pan and make sure it's just nice and clean and all the gunk is out of there. There's going to be debris from the clutches and whatever else has been humming around in the transmission is going to end up around here. Make sure you clean it out good. This is the valve body itself. Now, I'll go over to the table and give a more in-depth look at it. All right, back down to business. I've got the valve body out and in my roaster tray. I have right here is a spare bo valve body that I've got that I'm using for parts and what I needed was the gear selector out of the transmission it has the detents on it where a check ball hits for each of the bumps you get between shifting gears and then it has the neutral safety and reverse light switch right here which on mine is obviously mi missing the back half of it. So to remove this, we use a special tool. I got this tool with my uh, Fairbanks shift kit, very handy. What it does is it presses in with the detent ball and it keeps the ball from flying out and hitting you in the face, which it does usually it hits you in the face and flies across the room and it's never to be seen again. Easier to do with two hands. See how it's held in right there? Keeps it from going anywhere. And then to remove the shift, the shift selector, all you have to do is pull this retaining clip and then slide the shifter out over the TV bar, which is down here. The reason I'm doing this is because I need to change the shifter, and I also need to change the TV, the TV rod because mine's ground down for one reason or another.